Hello there, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about storage account connectivity. When I say connectivity, I'm not talking about the access details. So I'm not really talking about the access, how you're going to apply the security permissions for your storage account files and folders or maybe queues, tables or blobs, all that. What I'm talking is how you can access the storage account containers or its files or maybe queues tables and all other things so definitely there are three possible ways you can connect the first thing first public endpoints when i say public endpoints when i when you create within the storage account any of the files that can be publicly available if you want to configure in such a way let's say you configured public endpoints that means you are making your entire storage account files whatever the files or maybe a VHD, VHD a container or maybe other container inside whatever the files all are publicly available so that anybody can access from any anybody have internet let's say I can access even you can access or somebody else can access so that's about the public endpoints and when we talk about firewall uh, in between you are going to configure firewall so behind the firewall you have a storage account so first the connection goes and hits to the firewall and if you allow or if you have a firewall rule to allow it's gonna go and contact with your storage account so that's more secure way of uh, configuring uh, behind the firewall your storage account and other one would be the network integration uh, where you can use the service endpoints or private links so instead of your storage account traffic to you know route with different ISPs you can use Microsoft uh, backbone so that you get a higher uh, speed uh, connectivity and also the traffic is going actually in a secure way um, the all the traffic uses Microsoft internal backbone to connect to your storage account so it's more secure now it's time for us to understand what are the storage account components that you have so we talked about blobs files queues and tables but how that actually looks like L let's say you have not registered your storage account with any of your custom domains when I say custom domain maybe you have a company called xyz.com and your storage account was not registered with a C name or to your xyz.com then it would be you no know, a different name you would be you no know, getting so by default you actually get all these names let's say if, if I'm talking with the blobs so storage account name dot blob dot co dot windows dot net similarly if I'm talking about the uh, for the Azure files it's going to be my storage account name dot file dot co dot windows dot net so similarly for queues and tables it's going to be the queues and tables dot co dot windows dot net I'm sorry there's a spell mistake but windows dot net so similar to this so you have these options why we are talking about all this is let's say you created a container and you uploaded a file and you try to share so how do you identify whether it's a blob or a file or a queue or table so you can actually identify based on the name of the service that you are actually trying to browse let's say if it is coming as a blob in between so you're talking about the blob and if you are talking about queues so in between you have the after the storage account name dot queues so it's going to be a queue so that's how you're gonna identify so let's jump into this issue portal to understand more about how to actually create or make our storage account for public or how best we can secure with a firewall configuration and network integration all that we can you know jump into the lecture and do the quick live demo this is a storage account that we have created with one of our previous lecture so let's jump into the same storage account and you see here as we talked earlier we have four different uh, services that are offered by 
uh, Azure storage account. One would be the container and the files and tables and queues. And we talked about when to create all these uh, different type of storages. So let's say I'm going to actually do the first demo with the containers. Let's go to the containers and you see here you don't have any container. So container means like you can create a folder. So let's create a folder. Uh, let's say I can see this as my VHD example and I'm going to uh, create but before I create it so I have actually a VHD container so I'm gonna give here as the VHD hyphen let's say demo and you see here that is a public access level so this is what we are talking actually we are talking about the public if you are talking about the public endpoints do you want to allow the specific container uh, anonymous access that means anybody can access if they have just the internet connectivity so if you want to stop it you can make it as a private uh, or you can actually enable uh, completely anonymous but it's again a security point of view so it's you are gonna decide uh, this whether you wanna your containers to be completely uh, secure or not so in my case I'm just gonna uh, demonstrate about the public endpoints that is nothing but uh, enabling the anonymous access for anybody so it doesn't ask for any username and password so I'm gonna choose your container as well as the container specific blob and all other files also inside so I can uh, simply click on create so that's gonna create here uh, that would actually create a container and it will be enabled for the anonymous access so this is a container it got created and you see here the public access level uh, it's a container complete container is publicly available for anybody let's say if I just go to under VHD hyphen demo container and I can straightforward upload any of the files so let's say I want to upload a text file called test file and uh, when I upload this file by default this is available for anybody let's say if I go to the properties of this file I'll just close this file and do a quick refresh and I should be able to see here file and if I just go to the properties of this file and uh, copy this URL specific and if I open a new tab here uh, completely uh, cognitive mode and then if I try to browse this file I should be able to see the content of the file also say this is the uh, test file that's what it was mentioned within this file so I logged as a guest so this nothing has been you know signed in still I'm able to see so if you wanna try you can try but I'm gonna delete this complete so later point you sh you will not be able to see it and this is unsecured actually right so how do you secure it so when you try to create a container uh, you should be able to see that hey I want this container let's say this is a demo I don't want to allow for anybody let's say private no anonymous access so what would happen is if I just create this with a demo container and since it is a private if I go inside this and upload any of the file or the same file let's see and if I try to uh, browse the same file it says that hey you don't have uh, you don't have the access level was not granted because this file is or this container itself uh, not enabled for anonymous access so let's go to the same browser and try to again copy paste this and you see here uh, I'm getting actually address says that this XML does not appear to have any style information associated with it so it says that this specific resource does not exist because we have not enabled and we said that it's going to be private so we talked about the public and also we talked about the private now let's uh, talk about something called firewall specific how best we can uh, protect so when you go to the your storage account and within this you have a firewall and virtual net when you click on that you will be actually getting the firewall configuration thing so here two key things the first one would be the all networks what does it means is you are allowing your firewall to communicate that means anybody can access from anywhere like from any ISP like from your home network or office network anywhere but when you choose as soon as the selected network it means 
or whatever the vnets virtual networks that you create within your azure network that only will have the access so that's how you can configure so you can limit uh, you can minimize the your storage account exposing to other networks instead of you know complete public network you can choose to just you know uh, communicate for your existing vnets or you can create a one and add them so what happens is within that vnet whatever the web apps or maybe your uh, virtual machines all that can communicate with your storage account so you have any program that is storing uh, within your blobs that is allowed but not from outside that's the difference and the second point is uh, either you choose regardless of all networks uh, when, when you choose all networks and uh, it's you're actually allowing for everybody right but when you choose as the selected networks if you have the vnet that's fine but what if if you don't have any vnet but you wanted to restrict so what you can do is you can actually go to the firewall this is where you can specify the ip address or ci cid or ranges so that it's gonna only allow that specific IPs. Let's say if I, by default, it's gonna actually show my IP address and I can simply take this checkbox here so that it's gonna add uh, my IP address for the firewall rule. So I should be able to uh, access it. If I don't have this and simply I try to save this, it's not gonna work actually. It's not gonna open my files that have actually earlier sheet let's say earlier we try to uh, open up the file sheets from the uh, container right so let's go to container and try to browse the same file uh, it, it might not work because we didn't enable the uh, our firewall to be allowed so if you remember this is a container which is available for the public right so we'll just go inside and try to you see here it says that it's unauthorized so you don't have an access for this firewall and uh, you have to you know, wait for some minute or so that's what you know we are getting an error altogether and should not be able to even access the reason being we didn't actually allow so let's go back to the uh, configuration of this storage account and the firewall options within this firewall what we're gonna do is this time we are actually enabling this add my IP address as an exception so what will happen is now once this is saved and let's give 30 seconds or so because in the back end it has to be replicated right so now let's go to your container in this case this is a container yeah we saved it so we'll just go to the container and this is a container so I'll just click on this now I'm able to open up right so I can actually go to the properties and copy this URL and try to browse in another uh, page I should be able to see the content but as soon as I take out my IP address let let me go back here and in the firewall and networks I'm going to actually take it out my IP address by deleting here and uh, once I delete it here I'm going to save this so what would happen so once this is saved I'm going to actually refresh the same thing by waiting another five or ten seconds so that this should show as you don't have an access so I'll just refresh this still I'm able to see because I didn't wait it so now you see here after waiting some time uh, it says that you're not authorized so there is no authorization to access this so that's how you can actually secure when it comes to the firewall so let's also talk about other exceptions that can be applied when we uh, configure this uh, firewalls and vnet within this uh, azure storage so for the connectivity side when you're within your microsoft azure you have different resources that needs to be communicated with your storage account in the back end so by default you can trust them so that you no need to uh, explicitly configure some configuration for that so within the Microsoft Azure resources that are within your resources you have an access that can trust and that can access your storage uh, that's what this first checkbox and coming back to the uh, logging for the reader access uh, you can enable this checkbox so that anything happens for the reading of your access related can be actually logged in your storage and coming back to the storage metrics also you can 
uh, allow them to you know read the access and coming back to the uh, network routing this is again a key thing that we talked about earlier uh, about the either service principle or anything like you know network integration part uh, let's say you are trying to browse this file right you you try to browse this file so what happens so from your office network it goes to a different ISPs and finally it will reach the Microsoft uh, cloud and then from there it actually opens the storage account right so in between you are actually routing with unsecured ISPs also if you want to force that uh, should you know only route within Microsoft a network you what you can do is actually you can actually take this checkbox which is very much recommended so that you get the most secure and also there's no much latency for your applications so you can configure that Microsoft network routing so the routing would happen on a Microsoft backbone networks so instead of you know on your ISPs you can actually force to happen from Microsoft network routing this way you have lesser latency and higher uh, security also because you're actually using Microsoft backbone and coming back to the private endpoint connections I did create two other lectures on specific to Azure private endpoint and Azure private link services. Uh, one would be with the overview, other one would be the Azure private endpoint and uh, private link complete demo. And also there is another uh, just the uh, documentation which I have created another lecture for uh, what is the difference, major difference between Azure service endpoint versus Azure endpoint that also we really talked about it so you can please check out that lecture i hope this entire lecture is useful for you thank you for watching this i'll catch you in the next lecture thanks for watching this lecture